Just by way of introduction, I'm Deacon Matthew Pearson, uh, fourth year uh, theologian for the Diocese of Madison. Very thankful to Father Dressler for his kind invitation to preach uh, this evening. Um, I was in Walmart the other day, and as happens this time of year, all of a sudden just Christmas decorations kind of start popping up left and right, and you don't quite know where they came from. Maybe you're driving in your car and you hear Christmas music for some odd reason. It's the type of season we're in. A new year, you might say, is almost upon us. But for Catholics, our new year does not begin on January 1st. It begins at Advent, which is just uh, a couple short weeks away. And this, uh, our second reading from Hebrews, serves as a, a bit of a commercial for this upcoming season of Advent. So I just want to reread part of it so we can remind ourselves. But now once for all he has appeared at the end of the ages to take away sin by his sacrifice. So also Christ, offered once to take away the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to take away sin, but to bring salvation to those who eagerly await him. So our context for, for Advent coming up is always looking ahead, right, to the coming of Christ, but also to the return of Christ. So in some ways, I want us to have that in the back of our minds as we look at today's readings. Um, the main context for the readings today is a very simple message, and it's give. Give of yourself. The first reading and the gospel clearly have this reference to the widows. The widows give. That's what unites them in these readings. I heard a... I was at a conference several years ago, and one of the presenters had a very striking image. Um, and since we're just on the heels of Halloween, I think it's appropriate to share, though it's slightly morbid, but hopefully it'll get my point across. Dracula takes your blood that he may live. Jesus Christ gives you his blood that you may live. So. Why tell that little uh, comparison? Because each of us has to make a choice in some respects. What type of person, what type of Christian, what type of Catholic are we going to be? Are we going to be a Dracula? Or are we going to be like the widow in today's readings? Will you be a scribe and devour the land of the widows? So that that is a reference, the scribes, what they would do is when the husband would die, they would move the stakes that marked the land that belonged to the widow. They would move the, the county, or the farming land, you might say. So we see this today in a modern example. You might see when someone might go to the bedside of someone who's dying, getting on in years, they might try to change their will at the last minute to get some of the money. It's a similar idea to what the scribes were doing to these vulnerable widows. Do you see how that is a Dracula-esque, you might say, living of your life, even as a believer, even as a Christian? So each of us has to beware of the spirit within ourselves that can try to take from other people. But we look at the widows. The widow gave to Elijah. She gave the last of her flour. And what did she say? It's kind of hidden, so you gotta pay attention. When we have eaten it, we shall die. I only have a little flour left. Once I finish the flour, we have no more food, and we will starve to death. And she listens to Elijah and gives him from her nothingness, from her complete poverty. It's the same in the gospel, the two coins. She gave from her poverty all she had, her whole livelihood, this complete giving of self, total, holding nothing back. It reminds me of another line from the gospel of Matthew. For he that will save his life shall lose it. And he that shall lose his life for my sake shall find it. Now, I think this 
relationship between giving and taking, it obviously plays out in our own relationships, primarily in our family relationships. Because very often in relationships, we want something from the other person. We really want to take something from them. Sometimes it's, you know, it's owed, you know, certain respect, parents, children, etc., right? But there's times where we're looking for something out of a relationship that is entirely selfish. We want to suck the other person's energy. We want a compliment from that person. We want to be accepted by that person. For husbands and wives, parents and children, this, is, this can be very uh, uh, potent, we might say. This can be very powerful. If we're not getting what we receive, what we desire, do we still give is the question. When our husband isn't giving us the attention, when our wife isn't giving us the attention or giving us the emotional support, can we still give of ourselves in that poverty? Parents to children, same thing. Can you still give of yourself even when you're not getting from the other what you desire in that very moment? That's a great challenge for all of us. In short, we must take on this spirit of the widows. We must give from our poverty. We must hold nothing back. Even when we feel like everything has been taken from us, after all, what is a widow besides someone who has lost a spouse? So of all the people that should deserve, you might say be entitled to something, how does that person, through God's grace, give still? That is a powerful witness. That is a very powerful witness that we can all take with us today. So we must give our lives to Jesus Christ. It's the only way. It's what the gospel showed us today. It is the only way. Jesus points to that example, that story, for a reason. So today, tomorrow, Every Sunday, this Advent, this new liturgical year that's coming upon us, this new entrance into the liturgical cycle where we experience Christ's entire life, where we go through Advent, Christmas, Lent, the Triduum, the resurrection of Christ, the Ascension, Pentecost, life in the Spirit. How are you going to give yourself to God and to neighbor in this new year for us Catholics? How are you gonna give yourself to God and neighbor in this very moment? How are you gonna give of yourself, just like both widows, even to the point of death? Well, it's only in looking to Christ himself that we can do such a thing. So as we come to the altar, Allow the words of Christ to resonate in your hearts and become a part of each one of you so that you can give of yourselves just as he did. You can give to God and you can give to neighbor in the very same act of love and in the very same words. This is my body. This is my blood given for you.